Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this morning's study. Uh, before we begin, can we open with a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful for the time that we have this morning and this week, uh, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, to finish off uh, the book of Judges and this line of Samson and Delilah. But we need, Lord, your Holy Spirit to teach us. And Lord, we are thankful for the trials that we face each day and um, for the blessings that we receive by trusting in you. We pray that the things that we study will benefit the hearers and that people will search these things for themselves to understand that they are true and that we can obey the light that you have given us. Be with us now. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning, everyone. I'm a little tired. I got my brother off to the airport. He's going back home to Ontario and uh, to Hamilton, Ontario, and uh, him and his wife, who I met for the first time. So, uh, and I did share with him a lot of the things that uh, we'd been studying uh, when he was here. But I know, I'm sure he's not going to remember everything. But anyway, I'm a little tired, so my mind may not be working as, as well as it should. But we, together, with God's help, can go through uh, this study and uh, understand it clearly. So yesterday, we didn't have a lot of people here. And we sort of went through... Um, uh, chapter 16, we started going through this first part of it. We know that this in the story of Samson and Delilah, uh, the first angel's message is characterized by the first three verses. And, and yet there are symbols there that we would apply to the second angel's message. And so people may wonder about that. How come if we have symbols like midnight and, and symbols of the cross, why are we placing this as the first angel's message being empowered? Well, one of the things we need to re recall about each of these lines is that when we look at a line and we're zooming into it, sometimes there are multiple characteristics. And it is possible to take this story and to place it on a line uh, where the story of Samson and Delilah is the second angel's message. So, so we could do that. That would be possible. Um, that is, we could take the first line that we had, the line of Samson, and then we could take this chapter uh, uh, 16, verse 1 to 3, and we could just make that the second angel's message. So this isn't really arbitrary. That is, somebody looking at this might say, well, why are you doing it this way? Well, because we've done it different ways. That is, there's multiple ways to look at this. What we primarily try to look at in creating a line is we can take uh, clues from uh, the scriptures, from the different symbols that are there, and we can see that we can create a line. And that line bears out in our history with multiple witnesses. And what you have is a period of darkness, a time of the end, a message that arrives, a message that is formalized and then empowered. And that message needs to be received in order for a second message uh, to arrive. So, so there are lots of symbols all, all through these, these books, uh, the books of the Bible. But in the book of Judges, we have clearly seen multiple witnesses. And sometimes when we've created a line, all of a sudden, all of these symbols fall into place and and so with the story of samson and delilah we've used used it in this way it doesn't mean it's the best way to do it but it's the way that we've done it as far as this section chapter 16 so we've we know that first there is this story of this harlot and and then the story of samson and delilah itself but the story of samson and delilah we've had is the second angel's message now, um, 
So the, the main thing that we saw here was this 16 verse 1. Now 16 verse 1, this 161, um, and, and we talked about how the fact that in Mark chapter 16 verse 1, it's actually the 16th day of the first month. That's the day of the resurrection. And in Judges 16 verse 1, it harkens back to that symbol that is first fruits. Now here in this context, this has to do with the message that arrives at first fruits, and then that message uh, seven weeks later is again reiterated, right? So when we looked at this line, whether this is, you know, maybe this is the second angel's message, maybe this line should be something else. But here we can see clearly that 16 verse 1 is December 25th, 2021, when Colin uh, did his presentation on December 25th, 2021, and the light that came along with that, as well as the light that Stephen presented. And then seven weeks later, Pentecost, we have uh, uh, Odilio's presentation, and that's going to be February 12th, 2022. He's going to present the 1629, and then you're going to have... Uh, Verse three is going to represent November 24th, 2022. Now that date is in the line above, in the line of Samson. Now it could be possible that we, um, that we haven't got this correct. That is maybe the story of Samson and Delilah, starting with Delilah should be an entire line. And, but that wouldn't destroy any of what we have done because we would still have this message here of the situation with uh, Samson and this harlot. And maybe that would be um, a zoom into April 5th, 2030 in some way. And maybe we would take verses before that. I don't know. It's not necessary that we get everything correct at this time. What we, what we are learning is we're learning how to construct lines and we're learning how these symbols relate to these lines. And so things that we have seen and that, and that we're going to go over during the camp meeting, but we'll look at, you know, the gematria of a verse, the names of the judges or the oppressors, um, the Hebrew numbers in connection with the names of the oppressors or judges, as well as sometimes key words like the word shibboleth and, and that Hebrew number. Sometimes these are symbols in and of themselves, that they represent some kind of mathematical symbol that, that we've already understood. So, for instance, Delilah, her name is Hebrew number 1807, and we can see that represents July 18th. Um, Samson has the Hebrew number 8123. Now, that number itself... I don't know, other than, you know, you could say 81 is midnight and 23 is the 2300 days or something like, like that. That to me would be a little bit obscure. There'd have to be a really good reason to do that. But one of the things about uh, Samson's name is that uh, if you take that Hebrew number and you recognize it's a prime number, it's the 1022nd prime number. So, you know, we probably should put that somewhere in here. Um, so if I just make a box here, and we go. Um, um, so I think, is this how you do it, um, Aran? Something like that, prime 1022, oops. Pretty much. Equals H1, 8123. So that means 823. I don't know if I should do it the other way around or does it matter? Um, but 8123 is the 1022nd prime. And of course, that symbolizes October 22, which is the 187th day 
right? So we know October 2 is the 100, 187th day. So you can see that Samson and Delilah both produce 187 in, in that sense. So the 187th day of the Jewish year in 1844, it's October 22. So we can see that October 22 symbol, 1022, as this prime. Now, that's a few steps. But if, if that's all we were doing, just looking at Samson's name and looking at the Hebrew number, and, and that was building a whole story on that, that wouldn't really make any sense. I mean, it has to be part of something. I think there has to be a reason. And so we see Samson and Delilah both produce that number. And, and then we see that um, we have this line of Samson, which we've established through all these other different lines, that Samson is a line. And we've connected these different dates um, with our history in other lines as well. So... So we're not just making up something by, you know, looking at some number and finding some symbol. And the reason I mention this is I've seen lots of other counterfeits of what we're doing. Um, and, you know, for instance, there's some people who use numerology and they're analyzing everything and every number means something. But they have no structure. They have no biblical foundation. They have no story. It, it's all just subject to the will and the whim of the interpreter. It's like reading tea leaves. It doesn't really mean anything. And, and we're not doing things like that. We have symbols that have been established in this movement. Uh, you know, when we look at the story in, in Samson's line there, we have the lion roaring, uh, the honey from the lion. All of these symbols are explained throughout scripture. Um, so, the 300 foxes, all of these symbols. We've had other places. So here in the story of Samson and Delilah, what we've done is we've created this line with the first three way marks, all being the first angel's message. And they're relating to a message that has to do with the darkness that occurred during the 777 days. So that darkness is... And, and here's where we have a problem with Samson, because we remember the story is morally ironic. Um, and, and so there's a temptation just to take everything and sort of make it the opposite. But it has to do with Samson's morality that is ironic, not every aspect of the story. So, you know, darkness isn't light and that type of thing. So we have this darkness during the 777 period. Now, if it was ironic, you know, we would say that's the light of the 777. But I don't think that that's what's being talked about here. Because there is a message that has to bring us light. It's not going to be a message that brings us darkness. Right? It's a message that brings us light. And, and that light is... Uh, light that's going to correct something that we didn't understand during that period, right? And we know that Samson ultimately is victorious. So we're not going to say that his victory is a failure, right? We know that he's typifying Christ, but he's showing and demonstrating our human nature and our weaknesses and that we can overcome by Christ's strength. So the darkness that occurred during the 777 had to do with our understanding of uh, predicting events, right? So first off, we know that we were we had failed predictions, uh, November 9th, J July 18, and really March 27th, 2021, and December 25th, 2021, because those were the four way marks we had in our period of 777 days. Now, other things did occur, and they become way marks on our line, um, on different lines when we zoom in. But really, we had made predictions to some degree for all of those way marks, and nothing that we predicted came about. So when we get to December 25th, the movement really is in disarray. Now, Colin, so an invitation was made to 
Colin and, and others to talk to the American group about all of us getting together on December 25th, um, studying together instead of having separate groups that we all studied together. Now, I'd already been sort of banned from the American group. Uh, so really, they didn't want to have anything to do with me, whoever, you know, when I say that, it's it's not everybody. There's a few individuals who are in charge of making these decisions. How many other people were consulted or, you know, how many people were involved in that decision of deciding we're not going to meet together. We're just going to do our own thing and they can do whatever they want. I don't know. Right. So I'm not privy to that information, but definitely an invitation was made to have dialogue about it. And it was basically shut down. And, you know, maybe I was wrong in doing that. I don't know. But I felt that here we have this date and we had light that had been given to us in examining the foundation. And it made sense to, to come together and share some of that light to others. And so people weren't interested in hearing that light for whatever reason. Stephen then also noticed the 777 years from 457 to 321 on that date. And Colin, of course, did his presentation supporting the idea that Trump is going to become president again. So seven weeks later, Odilia does his presentation, introduces the 1629 presentation on the mandates. And we did study both Colin's and Odilia's presentations in, in our own studies. Um, and Colin continued to develop his understanding where he believed that in November 8th, 2022, uh, that the Republicans would run the table on the elections and be able to place Trump back as president of the United States. And that didn't occur. And then we had this anniversary date, November 24th, uh, 2022. Uh, that's, I think, 1629 days from... Um, trying to remember what date it was from. Um, 1629. Uh, from, it must have been from November 9th, 2019. I, I could be wrong because 2022. No, that wouldn't work. Not sure what date it was from. Uh, I'd have to look that up again. <clears throat> Let me see if I can just quickly find that. That study. Um, oh, from June 9th, 2018. So from when time came into the movement, we had this date. And, and originally I just looked at it because it was Thanksgiving. And uh, it happened to be 859 days, which in base eight is 1533, from July 18th to November 24th. Um, and then we noticed other things. It's 1,111 days from November 9th, 2019, um, 273 days from when the Ukrainian war began. Uh, and it's also this 168 showed up as a symbol, but also uh, Iran noticed that, because um, I noticed it's 2,688 days to April 5th, 2030. Um, but in looking that number up, it's, uh, an American tax form, number 2688, which is an application for the additional extension of time to file your taxes. And so that 2688 becomes the symbol of this additional extension of time and showing that this movement needs to recognize that the events that we're looking for immediately are not going to occur. And not because we're preaching a peace and safety message, actually quite the contrary, we recognize that there's a work that has to be done in our lives, in this movement, before this movement can fulfill its purpose in uh, giving the message to Adventists. So uh, 266, uh, 2688 is 2 to the power of 7 times 3 times 7. So it has the symbol of 273 in it. It's the... Um, there's other symbols that were used here. Uh, 2618, 2688 is 168 times 16. Right. So all of these different symbols that, that came to play in this line 
um, uh, related to this November 24th, 2022 date. So I put my name there. I mean, these are just different presentations that were given. So that's given on November 24th. So on November 24th, we recognize that 2688. And even though I was talking a little bit about it beforehand, on November 24th, we look at it and we find this, that, that Colin's prediction has failed completely by November 24th, and we have this symbol. So that's going to be the first three verses. So we now have the story of Samson and Delilah. And um, we have, uh, so if we go there, we have in verse four, and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the interesting thing about Sorek is that it has two different Hebrew numbers, right? So if you look up Sorek, it's going to say it's the same as 8321. And the interesting thing about that is that is an iteration that is if you took the name of Samson and we applied this um, a co uh, uh, Kopakar, Kopa, I can't remember his name now. Uh, the, uh, the, the constant, uh, Kopakar's constant, I think that's right. Um, you would order these from the highest to lowest and subtract from lower to higher, and, and you would get, um, a, you know, you would work your way up to the number 6174 within seven operations so um so we know that we can take the numbers eight one two three from samson's name and we can connect them to the eight three two one from the word sorek and the other interesting thing about these numbers um is that if you uh subtract eight three two one or you take eight three two one and you subtract from it 7796. So you subtract the two different uh, definitions, you get 525. And so we're saying that this relates to this anniversary of the end of the 777 structure. So an invitation is made again here. It's actually technically made on the 24th. And then on the 25th, uh, we begin this the study of the simple presentations of the lines. So this was a complaint that people had. Our stuff is too complicated. We made an invitation that you can look at this. We're going to present them more simply. Not that they're super duper simple, but more simply uh, introductory to what we had learned and re reviewed some of those things. There wasn't really much interest in that. But that was the invitation, and that's on December 25th. So we have that anniversary. Uh, there. And so this Sorek, this is the Valley of Sorek. This is where Delilah lives. And so Delilah is the symbol of July 18th attached to her name. Um, and her name uh, means languishing, right, or feeble. Um, uh, so I guess the idea there, if we're going to deal with these vines, the vines are languishing or feeble, right? That's where she's from, the uh, Valley of Sorek. And so we're going to see, again, similar to some other stories in the Bible, uh, to hear the Philistines come unto her and sit unto her, entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth and by what means we may prevail against him. So Samson had something similar in dealing with the riddle itself. So we can see a parallel between that. And uh, by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him and afflict him, and we will give the every one of us 1,100 pieces of silver. So we started looking yesterday as the, the 1,100 pieces of silver. We know the same amount of silver shows up in Judges 17, which is an earlier story just uh, appended 
to the end of Judges. So these other stories that occurred in prior to basically the time of the Judges um, are put at the end of the book of Judges. Um, now, one of the things, too, about this verse is it's 16.6. We can know that that's FFA. Um, and Delilah said to Samson, tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth and wherewith thou mightest be bound uh, to afflict thee. So uh, this idea of this affliction or this bat binding to afflict thee, we haven't really looked at too much. It is kind of interesting um, that if you look at the Hebrew numbers, the word bound is 631 and afflict is 6031. So I'm not sure what that means, but it's interesting that we have this repetition of these numbers uh, in these words, these words, unrelated words, uh, but these numbers show up. So uh, the word bound is asar, uh, that is to yoke or to hitch by an analogy to fasten in any sense. And then to afflict thee, um, uh, and it's interesting too, when they do bind him, they, they bind him sort of to uh, uh, a grinding stone. So he's kind of like to a yoke. And afflict, it, afflict, afflict thee is ana. So you got asar, dana. Uh, one starts with an aleph. The other one starts with an ein. So they're both vowels. This is a gutter, guttural vowel. Um, and this is the idea of looking down or brow beating. Uh, so, so they're going to afflict them. They're going to uh, basically bind them to a, a grinding wheel, right? Um, uh, so that that's what's going to happen. So that's symbolized here um, in in this language or hidden in this language of Delilah. Um, so, and Samson said unto her, if they bind me with seven green widths uh, that were never dried, then I shall be weak and brought and and be as other men. So these are, are bowstrings. But of course, none of these things are going to work. He's just playing with her. Um, so the lords of the Philistines are going to bring up these seven green bowstrings that had not been dried, and she's going to bind him. And then she's going to say, you know, now there are men lying in wait, abiding. So there's now men are lying in wait, lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she says unto Samson, the Philistines be upon thee, right? And he's going to break these bowstrings. Now, why he goes through this process, I don't know. Why he even ever tells her the truth, I have no idea. None of it really makes sense uh, from a logical point of view. But Samson isn't being logical here. But what we do have is we have different symbols that are being presented in this story. And I don't think that we've really plumbed the depths of this story of Samson and Delilah. Um, we, we've noted some, some things, but uh, there's still a lot more to see. Um, so what we did with this line, so if you go back to the line here, and, and we've already drawn out this line, so we're just trying to, to deal with some of these extra symbols. Um, so we take verse 4 as December 25th, 2022, as we noted, and we take verse 5 as April 8th and 22. So it's actually, um, we're, we're, we're using April 8th. Now, April 8th, and I didn't have a chance, I was really busy yesterday. I wanted to look at April 8th. Um, April 8th is an anniversary particularly that's my 10th anniversary, April 8th, 2023. Um, but it's also an anniversary of a prediction. That is, um, when we were addressing uh, time setting at the first, back in 2018, 
I did a series, a, a presentation on the week of Christ study. And before we had the November 9th, 2019 date, I did these uh, Vespers and uh, can't remember. I think I did Friday night and Saturday night or something like that. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up again. Uh, while I was at the School of the Prophets in 2018. And uh, I know that the first presentation was uh, not posted by Bronwyn um, because there was a controversial part of that. And that is I brought in this April 8th as a prediction that in April 8th, 2019, uh, Judas was going to betray Christ, right? So I was using the week of Christ study, which I'm not going to go into. Um, but April 8th showed up and there was other dates that were possible too. But April 8th was the first date that I had looked at. And I noted it was my anniversary. And I'm not sure if she, it was just because it was a prediction of a date or whether it was because I had introduced myself into that, um, that she didn't want to post it, but she didn't. Then I did the second presentation on the week of Christ, and she then uh, published the first presentation. So uh, when they initially were published, uh, it was, the second presentation was published first, and then the first presentation published second. Okay. So this April 8th prediction ended up bearing out with Jeff retiring at that time and Bronwyn who was aligned with Parminder, really was Judas betraying uh, Christ. Now, it's interesting because Parminder and Tess tried to portray Bronwyn as Judas as well, but they wanted Bronwyn to be betraying Parminder. Um, so, so it's kind of interesting how, how that happened. But the idea is not so much even Bronwyn as an individual. It's just the betrayal began you could actually include Parminder and Tess in that. So once Jeff finished that camp meeting uh, and did his last presentation, I think April 8th is the day that he's now retired, they start to take over and make their plans. And they, uh, so Bronwyn sort of put in charge of uh, negotiating with Parminder how the, the reins of power are going to be handed over to Parminder. And then we know how that ends up with in August of 2019, uh, where the rebellion happens, the rebellion of Baal Peor, and um, uh, Bronwyn herself is part of that until she finds that she can't have the position and control she wants of the school. That this is going to be given uh, to Tyler, and uh, so she then leaves um, uh, Germany, goes back to the U.S and now is opposed to Parminder and Tess. Though really in a lot of ways still in sympathy with their rebellion, right? Though that's more hidden. And that's a very difficult thing to say. You know, one is because I love Jeff and I love his family. I love Bronwyn and, and uh, Clayton and, and uh, Kathy's gone, but you know, these were people that were really dear to all of us, uh, especially those that knew them personally. And um, so none of this is like to be an attack upon any of these people. These are just the roles that ended up being played. So we have here April 8th and April 22nd, 2023. And we goes, goes back to study April 8th, 2022. And it says one year, 14 days. So I have no idea what that means. So I'm going to have to look at that before the next study, uh, what that means. So maybe someone can figure that out um maybe it's just one year and 14 days because from april 8th to 22nd is 14 days and maybe that's what that means but we're going to go back to study april 8th 2022 but it's also addressing april 8th 2023 so we're taking that those two dates and putting them together we're saying this is a formalization of a message so a message that arrives on december 25th 2022 now, I believe we also made an invitation to the camp meeting uh, on one of these dates, at least. I'm not sure how that worked. So I'm going to have to go back over that history and figure that out. But I know there was an invitation made to 
the Canadian group by me personally about the camp meeting. And then there's 107 days to the camp meeting. That's from the April 8th date. So that's the symbol of the 10th day of the seventh month, the symbol of uh, close of probation. And uh, then we have 16 verse 6. That's the symbol F FFA marking the empowerment, that message, which is this camp meeting that's coming up. So part of the problem with this line is we have dates that are still in the future. You know, July 24th is still in the future. It will be in the past. And we're saying it's an empowerment and it's connected to the symbol of FFA. So what does that mean? We don't know, right? So, I mean, people may have ideas about this. Um, I do know when we get to the camp meeting, as we go through these evidences of how God has been leading this movement, as we go through the history of this movement, because that's really what we're seeing in studying um, the book of Judges. We believe that God will be giving us light that we need to help us to make decisions about how we are to interact with each other, how we are to um, continue studying this message, how we're going to sort out the precious and the, the precious from the vile. All of these things that we have been struggling with, um, especially after July 18, 2020, but even before um, that we've been st st struggling with our whole life as Christians, as people searching for truth, we believe that light's going to come to this movement. And so it seems maybe kind of bold to place this, though, as the camp meeting that, you know, I organized, right? So it's, I'm no, but nobody special. So the Canadian and American group didn't plan this. And so the question is, you know, how can we do this? How are we so bold to say that something we're doing, that we're planning, is going to be an empowerment of the second angel's message in this line? But if we look at the invitation, if we look at what this line is about, this line is a zoom into something on some higher line. And um, it's giving us light for our feet to help us to know where to go, where to go next. And then we have, uh, for the third angel arriving, we have uh, from 16... Chapter 16, verse 6 to 22. Now, of course, 622 is also a symbol for FFA. That's the date that Jeff chose to be a symbol for FFA when they received the $165,000 to begin the School of the Prophets in 2011. And, and then he knows 2014, June 22nd, we're going to again, uh, we're going to have that camp meeting, the first camp meeting in Arkansas after they had started the School of the Prophets. So, so that's 622 there as a symbol. Now, the date that we're putting there for, for those verses is October 8th, 2030. It's the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030, 187th day from April 5th, 2030. And we have it there as the symbol of the Sunday law. Now, October 8th, we could say it's 10-8, but we also know that October symbolizes 8 because it used to be the 8th month. And so it can symbolize 88, which we know is a symbol of uh, that Jeff was using coming from 2 Chronicles chapter 29, right? So 8, of course, is the number of the resurrection. Eighth day, you're you're going to circumcise your child. Um, so we have all of these these symbols uh, that are in this line, but I'm uncertain about this line. So even though we have this line, there may be things that we we sort out later on with this line, but we at least can see the symbols there. Now, the October 8th, 2030 date, uh, it's not really evident from here why we have that, you know, why we don't have April 5th, 2030. Um, and I can't remember particularly, because we didn't write all those notes in there, 
why we ended up with that. I'm just looking at some of these other, I know it had to do with the number of days. So, um, yeah, so this, this might be the one. Um, okay, so this chart here, it's a little bit cryptic until we go through it. So what I had done is I had counted from the first time that they call the first month, the first month. That's going to be the first day of the first month in 1533 BC. And since we had this first day of the first month in 2030, I was interested in, you know, how many days is it? from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month, right? Because we have that in the story of Ezra. It starts on the first day of the first month, ends on the first day of the first month. And, and here we can see I, I placed all these first days of the first months. So we got um, 1,109 lunar years in one month from the first day of the first month in 1533 BC to the first day of the first month in 457 BC. So a, a lunar year is just 12 lunar months. So it's 1,109 lunar years and one month. And, um, and then I looked at to the next first day of the first month that's significant is 27 AD. It's 490 prophetic years, less two weeks. Right, so I did a calculation on that. Right, so that's going to be uh, there. And then we have from the first day of the first month in 27 AD um, to the first day of the first month in 1844. So it's April 5th, 1844. And it's going to be 1,872 lunar years and 10 lunar months. Whatever that means, right? So it's not exactly, you know... 1,872 year, lunar years, it's, it's got 10 lunar months at the end. So I'm just noting these things. Um, and then from the first day of the first month in 1844, we have 1,946 lunar months um, to 9-11. And then we have 186 years to the first day of the first month in 2030. It's 187 prophetic years and 20 prophetic months. And then we have from 9-11, we know there's 354 months uh, from 9-11 to um, first day of the first month. That is, if we take the month in which 9-11 occurs, that's the first month, that would be the first day, and 354 years of Ezra uh, uh, chapter 7 to 10. Um, and then... We use lunar months, and it's going to bring us to the first day of the first month in 2030, beginning the 187th, uh, um, let me see. Yeah. So it's going to be um, the 300, and that, that's going to start the new year. So there's going to be 187 days to the 10th day, the seventh month. Now, if we count from 9-11, 354 times 30, it brings us to, October 8th, 2030. So that's where we have October 8th, 2030. And then what we see is if we count from the first day of the first month in 457 BC to uh, the first day of the first month in 2030, it's 907,977 days. And that is 252 times 360 plus 777 days. So we have all these symbols. Right, what they particularly mean. Um, some of them I don't know if I fully know what they mean, but some I do. Uh, the one three zero one. Uh, does anybody remember what one three zero one was? So it was a Hebrew number for Barak. Right, so Iran has that there for Barak. His Hebrew number was one three zero one. So we were actually studying this in the story of Barak. 
Um, but this is where we got this 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. Now, why particularly we chose to place this in this line of Samson, I'm not particular, I'm not sure, but that's what we put. And so some of these things could be wrong, right? And on where we're, what way mark we're exactly marking with what particular date, and what particular verses. So uh, 6 to 22, so if we go back to Judges, chapter 16. So we're going to have this whole story of Samson and Delilah all the way up to 622. Now, I'm pretty sure that we could take this story of Samson and Delilah and make it... Um, an entire line itself, just this part of this story. Um, we didn't do that. I mean, we probably should, but um, I think as we start to go through these lines, uh, my hope is that when we get to the Sabbath on, of the camp meeting and the Sunday, that we will we'll sort of go over these things and try to bring them together, what they particularly mean. But we have these different events. So she's going to um, first have the situation where she ties him with these seven bowstrings, right? Then these new ropes, right? And then she's going to weave his hair into a weaving machine, into some fabric, uh, which seems pretty bizarre. And then finally, he's going to tell her the truth, right? And we can see that's a 3-1 combination. And, and so that should be an entire line in and of itself. Right? That's how it should, should be if we were going to uh, be consistent with these symbols. And I think it is. We just haven't drawn that line. Um, and... Uh, so when they finally shave off his head, that's when he's going to become weak as other men. And then we have this death of Samson. So the death of Samson itself as a way mark, we have as a repeat of history. That is, it's the fourth angel arriving, which is the second angel arriving. And we're just saying that's the Sunday law, right? Now, this, this could be wrong in how we've drawn out this line, but... If this line is correct, and we're saying that um, 23 to 31, everything dealing with the death of Samson, it has the characteristics of the Sunday law. But again, every single way mark can be drawn out as a line, and, and that could be drawn out as a line, but we haven't done that with Samson. And we spent a lot of time on Samson, and I think it was primarily in studying Samson, that we came to understand a lot of this use of the symbols of the Hebrew numbers. Um, uh, we learned a lot, even if we didn't fully understand Samson. It helped us when we went through the other judges again, because we went through them all basically three times. So... So these lines here, I'm just looking ahead. Yeah, so this, this is the line that dealt with those months. Um, this is the 800, 187 years, 20 prophetic months, 186 years, the week of Christ study. So these are the evidences that we had for April 5th, 2030. And then we have this October 8th, 10th day of the seventh month, 2030 day of atonement symbol. So we don't know. But I don't know the answer to this. And so I'm not sure how we, you know, whether we should just start looking at some more of these symbols and filling out these charts, because I don't know if we're going to sort them all out uh, at this time. Because we got a couple more days, and I still haven't really decided what we're going to do uh, in the next couple of days uh, to sort through this. But 
in some ways, we, we finished these lines. We have the line of Samson finished, um, except we could expand on it. Or we could just continue looking at some of the symbols in this story. So any thoughts by anybody on this? So are we going to take this then with that this was Samson as we've studied this as being indicative of separate events within the movement? Well, I mean, that's kind of what we've done with all of the lines. But, okay. um, but what do you mean by separate events within the movement? I mean, we have the Samson and Delilah line, which when we created this, we were just in this process of looking at this camp meeting coming up. So, right. so, you know, we were uncertain about what this meant, what this line meant. So we were, we were doing it at that time. And, and I'm not really cert sure about this line, right? That is, you know, I have a feeling that, that there's something missing um, with this line that it's, it's sort of, uh, seems to be pieced together of two different lines. And, and that is, you know, probably what we should have had is the line of Samson and then this line of Samson and the harlot, then the line of Samson and Delilah. But that's not what we did. And I don't really know where to start at this point, uh, where to start, you know, unraveling this. But it's just there's so much information in this story of Samson and Delilah. Right. right. Now, we did create the line of Manoah in going through it this last time that we never had before. And, and see, the problem with Samson was, um, is if I go back here, where is he going to start? Right. So we're going to have... Uh, in Samson, we, we first started out, we created this line of Manoah, which is very solid. There was a bunch of things that happened here that we just didn't expect um, in studying that line, right? So we we created this line of, of Manoah that was new. and But yet, when we look at the line of Samson, you know, we have all of these spans of... Uh, um, you know, from the first day of the first month again to the first day of the first month. And, and here we had these different way marks. We had um, November 9th, 2019, Judges 15, verse 7 and onward, Judges 15, 8, July 18th. So we have here, we have we can see our 7-7 seven, seven structure in the center of this, those three main way marks. And um, the 100 days of prayer, and then the 187 days to January 6th to 16th, 2021. And then we have the wave offering uh, symbol dealing with Colin and Odilio studies. So we just kind of place them here in this whole line, but this isn't a line, right? It doesn't have a time at the end, the messages arriving and so forth. So but when we first approached putting judges on a line, this is how we did it. And then you know, we have the line below, which we looked at. And again, it's going to have the same dates at the beginning and near the end. Why we did that. You know, we have the 16-1 and the 15-1. 15-1 representing Odilio's study, 16-1 representing Colin's study. Because Odilio's study, 15-1, it's going to deal with Pentecost, the wheat harvest. And 16-1 is going to deal with the symbol for first fruits. <coughs> Right. And then and then we um, uh, have the line of Samson down at the bottom. That's a different line at the top. Uh, but down at the bottom, we have this line 
And, and this is the line roaring, 9-11 and 11-9. So when we studied um, uh, these, we, we were studying at that time, we were understanding that 9-11 and 11-9 are the same way mark, that a line roars at 9-11 as well as 11-9. The other thing about Samson is we know that the gematria of his name is 81, the forward normal gematria, and the reverse gematria is also 81. So that's highly unlikely to happen. I don't know what the statistical probability is that if you write a word and you do the gematria of it, that the reverse gematria is going to be the same number. I don't know what the odds of that are. Um, I don't know how even to figure it out. Uh, but it's, it's definitely something I've never seen before. So with Samson, we have it. And it's this number of 81, which we have as a symbol of midnight, right? And there's lots of things that Def, Jeff did with 81, but we have it here with the name of Samson. And in the story of Samson itself, when you're uh, going through these, uh, this story of Samson and Delilah, uh, you're going to have uh, his hair, because one of the characteristics about Samson is, is his hair. And the Hebrew number for the word hair is 8181. So we probably should put that in there. And it mentions that in that, uh, if you look at the, it's going to be in, uh, let me see here. So this word hair shows up in, uh, Judges 16, uh, 22, and um, howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. And I thought there's another spot. Um, um, let me see here. Anyway, that anyway in that verse sixteen twenty two it mentions hair and and if you look at the Hebrew number it's eight one eight one. Um, I don't think that maybe they don't use the word hair the other times they're using these locks. Um, I don't see it here in my Strong's concordance. And, you know, and the, and the first time uh, hair is mentioned is in Genesis 25, 25 uh, with uh, Esau when he's born. And he came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. So it's interesting uh, reference there, 25, 25. So we have a doubling of 25. And we know the number of days from midnight to the midnight cry is 25 days. So, so we have this, this symbol, um, you know, I'm sort of rambling here a little bit, but, but you, you kind of get the point here right that this, that this, the symbols of midnight here are in the story of Samson, like all through Samson. And yet Samson, as one of the judges on the lines, so when we look at the line of the judges, Samson is the third angel arriving. He's this January 11th date up there at the top, right? So he's the third angel arriving, and we mark that as January 11th, 2023. So he's not, you know, one of the second angel's messages way mark. But the third angel's message is going to be empowered by the second angel. And so it seems to me that the story of Samson addresses the third angel arriving in this line of the judges in our history, but also the empowerment of that message as a repeat of history. And I, and I hope I'm not just babbling, that people understand what I'm saying here. 
what the implications are of that. So we just have too many symbols for midnight to kind of, um, and I need to put this here on this main line. Uh, so I'm just gonna put a little box here, just like this one. So the thing about Samson is uh, 81, 81. So that's his gematria. And here, okay. <clears throat> So we have all of these, I don't want these ones here. All of these symbols connected with Samson. And then Delilah. So we know that Samson is a type of Christ. Delilah is a woman. And we really haven't delved into Delilah too much. She's feeble, right? And she is the one that's going to entice Samson. She's going to she's going to cause his death ultimately. Um, but she's also a symbol of July eighteenth, the Hebrew number one eight zero seven, so eighteenth day of the seventh month. And then when we deal with the death of Samson itself, so if we go to uh, Judges 16, 23. Oh, and that was the other thing as well. Um, what was that? Uh, I saw something and then I neglected to... Um, just one other thing about Judges 1620. Now this is the one this is the one where Samson is going to be overcome, right? He's going to lose his power. And, and she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson, and he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before. So what do we notice about the Hebrew not the Hebrew phrase there as at other times before It's kind of a, a really strange uh, expression I mean it's definitely not translated literally So so the words um I go out as time by time is how Young's literal translation translates it. If, if we were to look at the Hebrew itself, um, it's, it's going to have this word, and it's 6471. It's going to be doubled, uh, but it, it's, it's, they have a prefix to each one of them. So the word itself is pa'am. Uh, that's pa ein mem is, but this one is going to say ka paam ba paam. So um, these prefixes ba, ba means um, uh, like with or or at or in, um, and then the the kaf at the beginning. Usually it means um, like them or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure here in this form. Um, I'm just going to look it up here quickly. But but what do we see about those those numbers there? So I'm just going to go back here. Um, okay, Capricorn, right? So so 
Iran noticed that. We have Capricar's uh, uh, constant. Now, Capricar's constant is 6174. Now, this is just an iteration of those numbers. But one of the things we learn about Capricar's constant is that an iteration of numbers is consistent with this, what we've been doing, that, that we've actually been using Capricar, right? And so if we were to take these numbers, 6, 4, 7, 1, and write them in order from highest to lowest, 7, 1, 6, 4, minus 1, 4, 6, 7, we would get 6, 1, 7, 4. We would get that Capricar's constant. And, and it's a very interesting number. Um, but here we have it as 6, 4, 7, 1. And re remember, we had it in the story of... Uh, um, trying to think of the name. Uh, that's going to be um, seven six four one. So that's how I'll find it. That was in the story of of Jephthah, where we had Shibboleth. So Shibboleth, which now means you know something outdated, some kind of um, tradition or something that's outdated. But originally it just meant a brook. And there's this test that was done with the Ephraimites. And, and so Shibboleth is 7641. But now we have just a different order of them. Right? So in the story of Samson, we have 6471. So just a different order of those numbers. So I'm just looking up something here. Yeah. So uh, these two words, uh, pa'am, so we got a ka pa'am and, uh, um, oops, and uh, ba pa'am, just the different uh, prefixes. So um, a ka pa'am, it's just the noun feminine, feminine singular, and it's got the cough at the beginning. Um, and usually means them. Or in this case, it means when, right? So, so when, and when we look at the word pa'am itself, Let's go there. Um, it means times, right? So that's the most common way that it's it's translated. So it means a stroke, a beat, a foot, a step, an amble, an occurrence. So a foot, hoof beat, footfall, footstep, anvil, occurrence, time, stroke, beat. One time, once, twice, thrice, as time on time at this repetition, this once, now at length. So what is this telling us about uh, this event, this fourth event? And he wants to go as at other times before. So when times, uh, uh, before times, I guess literally is how you would uh, translate that. When times, before times. So what is this telling us about this verse, Judges 16, 20? Because if it's times and it's doubled, um, What what is this word meaning? It's a repetition, right? Right? Because he's talking about, of course, at other times I went out. I'm just going to do the same as I did before. But this is about a repeat of history.
And, and the word uh, shake myself, this is the idea of a rustling of a mane, which in usually accompany, accompanies the lion's roar. So here, if we, if we examine how we look at this line, at this story, can we take these first four events as November 9th, 2019, July 18, 2020, and December 5th, 2021? Could we do that? Could we take that as occurring in the 777 period of time? Uh, this would go back to one of these other lines that we had drawn with Samson. Uh, this line here, even though this is not uh, the verses here, but we could take these verses, or not these verses, these dates, November 9th, 2019, July 18, 2020, and December 25th, 2021. Maybe we put March 27th in there and we put December 5th, 2021 as this fourth. But what we're saying is that these are the events of this movement. And they're going to be illustrated with Delilah enticing Samson to give up his secret. And then the fourth time is some event after that. It's a repeat of history. Any discussion on this? Because we see it's the first, second, and third angel's message and the fourth. It's a 3-1 combination. Can we place it there? Or is there some other place we should place it? Do we kind of step back a little bit and review these lines to see where else it could be placed? Okay. Um, so uh, it was an Elon and so here we so here is where we had the line of Samson initially. So this this line we ended up putting uh, later. So this is just the line of Samson. The line of Samson. You're not showing it. Oh, sorry. I can see it just fine, but not everyone else can. So there we go. So this is the line of Samson, right? The one at the bottom. Um, and um, this one's going to start like chapter 13, right? So we have chapter 13, 14, 15, and 16, because we have the story of Manoah, the birth of Samson. Um, we have the story of, uh, you know, his marriage. Um, how that happens. And then we have the story of what happens in the aftermath of his marriage, um, all those, those events. And then we have chapter 16, which is going to have the harlot. So there's a bunch of stories in the story of Samson. Uh, but when we looked at this line, we had 9-11 and 11-9. They become this way mark that's tied together. And then we had July 18, 2020 as the, the first angel empowered. And then we had um, uh, chapter 14 and the end of chapter 14 and going into chapter 15, dealing with the second angel's message. We, we didn't really finish this line off this drawing here, but we did later. Um, but what we recognized is um, that we needed this story of Manoah, right? So the line of Manoah. And so this line is going to have, it's going to go all the way back to 1989. It's going to have these 777 days at the beginning and at the end. So the way that I would look at it is that if we're taking this line of Samson and Delilah, the interactions between them, but that would be representing that 777 days at the end. It would be a zoom into that period. Right. It's illustrated in um, this line of Manoah. 
And and on this line of Mano, we didn't really put all the verses there at the last part either, which verses that we would have for that. So it's still kind of incomplete. Um, but that's the other line. So then we have uh, initially when we started looking at this, it's this line on the bottom. The main thing that we had seen in 15 and 16 is that we had uh, these studies of Adilio and Colin. But again, this one's going to have those three dates. And it's going to use Judges 14, and then it's going to go to Judges 15, and then it's going to, you know, so it's kind of going forward and backwards. It's sort of mixing these two chapters overlapping. But again, it's not a complete line. Um, and then we had uh, here this line at the bottom, right? That's where we focused on the lion roaring, the lion and the honey, that connection between 9-11 and 11-9, all the way to July 18, 2020. The message that we give, that sweet in the mouth, right? We eat this honey, and it's going to be a bitter experience at July 18, 2020. And there we're marking July 18, in a sense, as a symbol of midnight. We have Samson there with his hair and his gematria. And then we come to the end of this line, and you're going to get to December 25th, 2021. And then you have Odilio's presentation and Collins, right? And then you're going to have the 10th day, of the first month, first day, of the first month. So these these way marks we have had in other lines, but what we haven't really done with the story of Samson, to, to my dissatisfaction, is brought these lines together so that we can clearly mark them out. They just seem to be a bit jumbled together. I, I think people would agree with me on that, what we had done with Samson. Uh, again, this is just going to be that line with uh, that we just looked at. Uh, I don't know what I did different here. Probably not too much. And, and um, these are unrelated other than we have this November 24th date that's being witnessed to here. And then we have the lines we looked at. And then we have, again, those different first days of the first month. And this is some other line uh, dealing with Colin's study. Okay. So if we're going to try to do this, shouldn't we have the line for Manoa, the line for Samson's marriage, so chapter uh, 14, uh, chapter 15 as a line, and then chapter 16 would have uh, two different lines. Um, but these are all part of a bigger line in the story of Samson, right? So that uh, they would all come together. So if we go back to the scriptures here, we have the story of um, the birth of Samson in chapter 13, right? So that's going to be the line of Manoah. That's all just going to be one line. Chapter 14, you're going to have his marriage. And there's lots of detail in there, things that we've looked at. That would be a line. Chapter 15, then, is uh, going to be uh, what happens in the aftermath of that. So he's going to defeat these, uh, these uh, Philistines. He's going to have this conflict with the Philistines. He's going to have the 300 foxes. right? And that whole story would be a line. And then you have chapter 16, where you really have three different stories. Samson and Delilah isn't, even though it's at the title at the beginning, first it's about the harlot. Then it's the story about Delilah, these three events, the three-one combination. And then it's the death of Samson, right? So that's going to be the final one, which I look at as the Sunday law. So uh, let me think here. Uh, so if we go back again, um, so even in this birth of Samson, you know, this line of Manoah, um, see, we can zoom in and we can zoom out on these lines. I mean, I could see how this is all about the first angel arriving and the first angel being formalized. This is about the first angel's uh, empowerment, chapter 14. Chapter 15, 
you're going to have the second angel arrive. Right? It's going to be the second angel's message. And then you're going to have chapter 16. You're going to have uh, midnight and then the midnight cry. So the formalization empowerment of the second angel. And then you're going to have the third angel arrive with the death of Samson. So you can actually create from, from this, these four chapters, you can actually create the seven way marks in each of these stories. And I think part of the problem, what we've done is we've zoomed in and zoomed out and mixed things around. But even when you do this, so even what we've done isn't wrong. There is a line of Manoa. It's just that there's so much detail when we start looking at these lines, this is my opinion, that we just start to see all the details and we just start to create these lines. But uh, I think this is a much better way to look at the whole line of Samson encompasses all four chapters. It has seven way marks that are characterized. But we can zoom into each one of those. So each one of them produces a line. And, and we just haven't done that. So I, I don't know how much we're going to get done on this, but the one thing I guess that we can say just to answer, because um, we're answering Dwight's question of, of where we can place the story of Samson and Delilah. Is there any better place to place it? Because if we're going to take it, it has to be a line in and of itself, right? So if we take the story of Samson and Delilah, it's going to have to represent the first, second, and third angel's message and the fourth, right? Because that's what a line does. And the best place that it can illustrate would be from November 9th to December 25th with the fourth one representing the history we're now in. Does that make sense, Dwight? Does that help? It gives me something more to consider. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, because I, I don't think we're going to solve this right now. I, I just... But but I think this overall picture of Samson makes sense. So I'm going to try to draw this out. Maybe what we can do is try to just give this overall line of Samson and then the branches down of what those lines might look like in the next, uh, what, today's Monday, so we got Tuesday, Wednesday, two more studies. It seemed fair enough. It should give us time to work it through. Okay. Now I'm exhausted, so I need to stop. <laughs> I got a lot to do today. So um, so unless there's any other questions, I don't think I can go any farther today. Okay. I think you've done well. Okay. Well, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful uh, for the time that we've had here this morning. Thank you for helping us in sorting through Samson. We have definitely a clearer picture, though we know that there's many details missing. Help us to understand these things. I pray for each person that you can be with them today. Be with them in their personal choices, in their study, in their relationships in the work that you've given them to do and help each one of us, Lord, to represent you to those around us. We give all things and leave all things in your hands. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.